Hello, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Amuna Project. We here at the Amuna Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to information, inspiration, education, guidance, advice, and I'm going to continue on uh, with my theme of the last few videos of the Korach Rebellion, Korach Vadoso, Korach and his assembly. And uh, I want to look at a verse in the 16th chapter of the book of Numbers, uh, verse 13 where Korach says, Is it not enough that you have brought us up from a land flowing with milk and honey to cause us to die in the wilderness? Very unusual. We usually refer to the land of Israel, the Holy Land, as the land flowing with milk and honey. And here, Korach, talking real brazenly, chutzpidik, to Moses, is saying, isn't it enough that you brought us from a land flowing with milk and honey? Referring to Egypt. Now, Korach was not a fool. What he did was foolish. But he himself was not a fool. He was not stupid. What he did seems to our eyes not very bright. Um, it doesn't seem like the words of a smart man. To attempt, to attempt to usurp uh, the people of Israel's leadership, audacious, foolhardy, to malign uh, Moses and Aaron, its brazen disrespect, and to refer to the land that was the source of so much pain and so much suffering, the land of Egypt, there's Mitzrayim, to refer to that as a land flowing with milk and honey, that's... Uh, that's Meshiga. That's, that's just crazy. But Korach was neither foolish nor insane. He was mistaken. He was wrong. He misled himself. Where did he go wrong? What led him to an act that was so inconsistent with his own character? This wasn't just some guy. This was a very important man in the tribe of Levi. It was Arav um, Eliezer, uh, Eliyahu Eliezer Dresler, who explains that the stimulus for Korach's uh, behavior is Nagias, personal vested interests. When someone is subject to Nagias, he neither perceives accurately nor acts normally. Uh, it was Harav Aaron Kotler, we talked about him in a previous video. Aaron Cutler, who observed that Korach is an enigma. His behavior is paradoxical. On the one hand, he seeks to ascend to a loftier spiritual plateau to become closer to Hashem. And on the other hand, he didn't care how he achieved his goal. He did not care whom he stepped on, whom he destroyed, whom he disrespected, uh, even himself. So great was his obsession to perform a greater spiritual service for the Almighty. He was wrong. He fooled himself. He lied to himself. He caused himself to stumble very badly. And we can learn a lesson from this. When you have your own personal interests involved in something that should be, L'Shem Shemayim should be, yeah, for the sake of heaven, that tends to tip the scales. We must always be careful about this. We're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. And until next time, on behalf of the Amona Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you so much.